Warning, this is the best comedy romance anime of all time. Kaguya-sama Love is War may contain peak entertainment, unmatched enjoyment, beautiful animation, iconic soundtracks, a fappable OVA, incredible characters, and most importantly, a well-written story with a satisfying climax. And by climax, I don't mean what I did during the OVA, I'm talking about Season 3, Episode 12, the most orgasmic anime episode in cum history. This finale is the best episode of Love is War, and I came to that conclusion, well, it wasn't the conclusion, but I still... Anyway, there will be a season 4 after this because we're not even halfway through the story yet, but this episode is where it peaks in my opinion. It's the Ozymandias of the series, and it brought me more happiness than any episode of anything else ever has. Kaguya-sama Love is War will be the greatest anime many of you will experience in your lifetime. It's in my personal top 5, so I had no choice but to make a video expressing my appreciation for this 10 out of 10 masterpiece anime. Let's time travel back to the beginning for a sec. Season 1 one episode 1 came out at the start of 2019, and I immediately understood that this exciting new anime would soon become a classic. And that was before I even finished the episode. I actually made that determination about halfway through the opening. Purely due to nostalgic bias, the first opening will remain my personal favorite, but every Kaguya opening is an FDA-approved banger. The premise is basically a constant battle between two tsundere's who try to trick the other into confessing their love, and the episodes are divvied up into three to four battles that creatively include a narrator who delivers the results at the end of the battle, showing who won or who lost. The true winner, though, is you, the viewer. The sheer number of generic high school anime I've watched would probably make my ancestors ashamed, but Kaguya-sama Love is War was already unforgettable after just one episode. Little did I know, this student council room would later harbor many of my favorite memories and become one of the most iconic settings in anime history. Not to mention the Chica dance ending in episode 3 shocked me with its unprecedented level of quality. It might have gotten a bit overplayed after I overplayed it, but objectively, it was the biggest flex I've ever seen in an anime ending. Rewatching these early episodes not only helped me appreciate the subtleties I missed initially, but witnessing the couple's feelings for each other growing every episode really makes their eventual confession a lot more impactful. I too have a confession though. I love you. No, I just want to confess that I wasn't always an absolute genius with impeccable taste. A long time ago when I finished watching the first season of Love is War, I only gave it a 9 out of 10 because I was disappointed that the main characters hadn't kissed, confessed, or fucked each other yet. If they did, I probably would have given the season a full 10 out of 10, but later in life I started to understand why it really deserves a 12 out of 10. You see, the beauty of edging is not the destination, but rather the journey. I'd like to ask you guys a deep philosophical question. What's better, to nut as fast as you can right before bed because it's a school night, or to nut after you've been home alone for several hours carefully browsing Hentai Haven for the perfect video? Similarly, after three seasons of build-up, this climax in the season 3 finale felt greater than any nut I could ever hope to achieve. If this episode aired in November, it would have become December real quick. After witnessing that, I don't even know if I'm technically still a virgin anymore. Words literally cannot convey the feeling it gave me, so the best way to describe it would be this clip from Devilman Crybaby. <laughs> Kaguya and Shirogane finally sharing their first kiss was potentially the greatest payoff ever in anime. I'm pretty sure it made me even happier than it made them. I totally didn't expect it either. I mean, obviously I figured one of them was about to finally confess, but a kiss was even better than what I had hoped for. It literally sent chills across my entire body, especially my balls. Which reminds me, this video is sponsored by Manscaped. Imagine, you're finally alone with your crush and the tension's been built up for three seasons, but just when you're about to confess, she runs away screaming after smelling a fermented onion odor erupting from your ball sack. Fear not, my friends, because Manscaped's Performance Package Bundle can save you from embarrassing smells and give you a much-needed confidence boost. This bundle includes my favorite products like the Waterproof Lawnmower 4.0 as well as the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant. 
They should really hand this stuff out at anime conventions because you could probably shit yourself and still smell good. Manscaped also just released a new collection of anti-chafing high-performance boxer briefs. If you don't know what I meant by high-performance, you'll understand soon enough. They're available in several awesome color combinations and they're crafted with an innovative jewel pouch design that cradles your balls with a perforated fabric to maximize breathability and attract waifus. Go to manscaped.com right now and get 20% off plus free shipping with my promo code ECHIDNUT20. There's also a link in this video's description, so once again, use the promo code ECHIDNUT20 for 20% off plus free international shipping. Thanks again to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Now, Echidnut, why exactly is Kaguya-sama Love is War a flawless masterpiece? Well, Echidnut, I'm glad you asked. In my opinion, it's mostly a masterpiece because it is. Ah, yes, Echidnut, I agree. You know what they say, great minds think alike. First of all, this anime's episodic style makes it easily accessible to anyone. You could watch a random episode from any season and still enjoy it without needing proper context from the previous episodes. The overarching plot does progress every chapter, however, so while it's obviously a lot more rewarding to watch chronologically, the fact that each episode could also be enjoyed individually is part of what makes this timeless classic so easy to recommend. On the topic of plot progression though, it definitely takes its time because the primary focus is humor and entertainment. It's more of a com-rom than a rom-com since the romance aspect is secondary to the comedy. And I'm surprised the author isn't a stand-up comedian because every chapter is filled with creative jokes and relatable references. Most comedy anime overuse the same repetitive jokes and might occasionally drop a moderately funny punchline that makes you exhale from your nose, but Kaguya-sama Love is War forces genuine laughter out of you like some type of laxative. It's basically a really pleasant enema. Every time a character gets into an awkward situation, I feel their pain as if I'm the one experiencing it. The relatability in this anime goes hard, and that's evidence of good writing. But let's talk about what good writing actually means. Domestic Girlfriend came out at the same time as Love is War Season 1, and admittedly, it was just as entertaining, until it wasn't. Domestic Girlfriend approached entertainment by bombing us with bizarre plot twists at every opportunity until eventually it couldn't outdo itself anymore and ultimately lost its grip on the viewer's interest. Love is War's entertainment value is infinitely more sustainable because it doesn't pollute the plot with game-changing, substantial revelations until much later in the manga. It still delivers peak entertainment despite 90% of the story taking place in the same room with the same characters doing the same normal everyday activities. It never resorts to ridiculous plot twists and in fact the climax of the story was made extremely obvious from the beginning. Everyone knew the romance between Shirogane and Kaguya was inevitable, yet even though we expect it, that doesn't lessen the impact whatsoever. A simplistic, predictable plot that somehow still manages to be exciting can only be explained by brilliant writing. But the best the best evidence of the author's immaculate writing is probably the characters. For example, Kaguya Shinomiya is so complex, they literally put her conflicting ideologies in a courtroom to make her argue with herself. Kaguya's love interest is her kaicho. Miyuki Shirogane has got a lot of great qualities, but my favorite thing about him is definitely his sister. Chika Fujiwara was best girl for a little bit after she did that iconic dance, but she's mostly a comic relief character who becomes kind of annoying. That's intentional though, because the other characters find her annoying as well, especially Ishigami. Ishigami's a virgin otaku gamer whose only social interaction occurs via Discord, so he's basically you which also happens to be his name. Yu Ishigami is the most relatable character in the anime, but he's not a blank slate for us viewers to insert ourselves into because he's got a distinct personality and you can't help but root for him. Miko Ino is honestly becoming best girl in the manga. I said it, Miko is the character I've been the most invested in recently, and I'm sorry for betraying Hayasaka like that, but it is what it is. All the characters are amazing, so picking just one as my overall favorite is pretty much impossible because my preferences change every arc. I'd also like to address a concern I used to have before I read the manga, 
without spoiling anything, of course. Love is War, also known as Kaguya Wants to Be Confessed To, had always been about the two main characters trying to expose the other's romantic feelings for them, while simultaneously hiding their own. So now that the cat's out of the bag, we've officially reached the climax of the story. Typically, what follows the climax is the resolution, yet there's enough source material for at least another three anime seasons. I wasn't opposed to the series taking a victory lap, but because it was so perfect, I was naive enough to worry that the story would shift its focus away from the two main characters I had grown to love. I thought about One Punch Man, a really good anime where the main character can kill anything with a single punch. With a premise like that, you can't really maintain the spotlight on the protagonist because he'd resolve every conflict in half a second, so instead they shifted focus onto the side characters in order to actually have a story. And it worked. One Punch Man is very entertaining because it was never really about One Punch Man. But Kaguya Wants to Be Confessed To was about Kaguya wanting to be confessed to. And now that she got what she wanted, I was afraid that the plot would abandon her and promote the side characters to main characters. Luckily, all my worries were washed away when I started the manga. Whenever I felt like there was nowhere left for the story to go, the next chapter surprised me with a new topic I hadn't even considered, and delivered it with the same standard of quality it's always upheld. It never abandons the main characters, yet still gives you reasons to be invested in the side ones. Right now, I'm calling a upon all my anime-only subscribers to give it a read because the entire manga goes hard from start to finish. Uh, well, the most recent arc was a little bit more flaccid than usual, but overall, in the words of Ishigami, it's still rock hard. It's been an absolute pleasure to witness such an amazing anime, and it feels so good to finally reach the story's climax I've wanted for years. It's been a while since an anime made me feel this level of hype. Kaguya-sama Love is War has been an incredible experience, and I'm highly recommending it to anyone and everyone. Thanks guys for watching. If you don't mind hitting the like button, I'd really appreciate it. Also, let me know in the comments who your favorite character is, and if you've read the manga, I'd really like to know why chapter 220 is your personal favorite. But keep talking about Kaguya-sama, I gotta go take a shit. Until next time, oh,